guys, welcome back to my channel, Tales and Tones with Amy. If you're new, welcome, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So today I am doing a book tag that I have created myself, which I call the Banned and Burned book tag. I have no idea if there's any tag that's kind of been done like this before. I didn't find one when I was really thinking about just the history of burning books and the socio-political implications and all that. And so I thought, you know what, I want to create a tag about this. So I compiled 10 questions all together, and for people wanting to do this tag, again, all are welcome. The sort of criteria, it's not, it can totally range from being burned or a banned book or whether it was banned or burned by like one individual person or an organization or an entire government. Like you can answer these questions based on all those types of whatever the range was of the banning or burning at the macro or the micro level. So, question number one. Which books have you read that have been historically burned or banned? So I've got a few of these that I picked out. One of which you guys may know from my previous videos, I am um, deep into the Middle Eastern studies, like that's what I did for my masters. And so a book I've read that has been burned has been, of course, the Holy Quran. And the reasons why this has been burned are pretty self-explanatory. Again, each religion thinking that they are the one truth. And again, quite frankly, reading the Quran, to me, there's really not a great deal of difference between the Quran and the Bible in terms of which is worse, in terms of women's rights, in terms of they're okay with slavery, condemnation of any, any sexuality except heterosexuality. So yeah, for me, it's hard to see um, the sort of difference like in the literal text. So yeah, big book that has been burned over the years and over the centuries, the Holy Quran. Another book that I've read that has been burned and banned is of course, the Harry Potter series by JK Rowling. And when I first became a pagan back in 2018, like I started rereading the Harry Potter series, like purely to see if fanatical Christians had a point in Harry Potter trying to promote paganism as a newly converted pagan and then I read it again and I'm just like they are so full of BS it's ridiculous and of course another book that I have read that has been burned is the Twilight Saga and the only part of that that I have is Midnight Sun I donated the rest of my Twilight um, books when I was in college and that's okay I'm okay with just having Edward's perspective on my shelf and it's just interesting because Twilight has been burned for both religious reasons there was a Polish priest I can't remember when a few years back who burned Twilight books and Harry Potter books together again because it felt it promoted magical elements that their religion did not condone but also for a lot more reasons a lot of people have burned twilight in response to either it's being um again for its problematic um elements of glorifying abusive relationships and as well as just being really bad a really bad piece of literary work and, and people are just burning it in response to all the hype that's been given to it and another book I've read that has been banned and was the most controversial book in the United States in 2017 is, of course, The Kite Runner by Khaled Husseini. And I really love this book. I think it was really deep. It was so moving and it just really frustrates me the way that people want to ban it because, yeah, they're is some dark stuff to it but you can totally see it's not a lot of people I read this there was one news piece about um, this mom who really didn't like that the kite runner was a book that they were going to use in their English in the high school English literature class and made a big stink about it and what was her problem yeah of course the homosexuality rape scene yeah it's just really disappointing that you know people reacted with such negativity towards you know these sadder tr sadder troops that rather than wanting to engage with it and what was funny about about that specific like PTA mom is that the teacher already knew that there would be dark things and so he sent a letter to all the parents and saying hey this is what we intend to read 
in class our next book the kite runner there are some dark themes if you don't want your child to read it you can opt out so even with the teacher and the school district making that consideration for each um, parent to decide whether they wanted to engage this was good for their kid or not still the mom complained that it was even an option and so yeah again it's a really great book I think it's really important in understanding various elements of what's been going on in Afghanistan and yeah I think it's just a pity that people have responded so negatively to it. Question number two. What books do you want to read that have historically been banned or burned? Well certainly one of them is Madame Bovary by Gustave um, Flaubert. You know this classic novel has been banned in a variety of capacities by various countries because again it, it is that sort of novel of a woman like Anna Karenina being dissatisfied with her life and having an affair and flouting social norms. So again, the whole reasoning for the ban is that it disrupts, you know, um, family morals and like that sort of thing and is obscene and all those things. And by extension, another one that I want to read for the same reason is Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. Again, same thing. Woman is married to a man who's paralyzed, so they can't have a physical relationship. So she ends up having an affair with the sort of Gardner groundskeeper. Again, very typical trying to ban a book because it, I wouldn't say necessarily promotes adultery. It's just showcasing and giving a commentary on this um, social phenomenon that happens and people don't want to deal with it so they try to ban it. Another book that has been banned that I hope to read this year is Dr. Zivago and I don't remember the exact story either the author what is it Boris Pasternak he either tried to get um, his book published in his native you know Russia and either it was rejected or he just knew outright that this was a book the material was something that they would not want to publish so either way whether he tried or not in Russia or the Soviet Union he went to Italy and got this published in Italy and it won the Nobel Prize much to the embarrassment of the Soviet Union so yeah I definitely want to check this out by the end of this year and another book that I want to read that has been historically burned is, I don't have a physical copy, but All Quiet on the Western Front. I think I haven't delved enough into that side of history, especially the sort of reactionary um, responses and books to the horrors of World War One and World War Two, and just, again, showing the not very nice, you know, the antithesis of like nationalism showing the true horrors of war. So yeah, that's something I want to get into as well. Question number three, what is your favorite book that the Nazis burned? Trying to find as many lists as I could of books that the Nazis burned, I would have to say my favorite of all of those would be War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. And they burned it um, because, you know, even though um, War and Peace is about, you know, Russia going against Napoleon, like in the 19th century. Just the fact that it is a sort of nationalist novel of Russia and that it, um, Russia was one of their enemies in World War II. Like, basically, they burned it because anything that does not promote, you know, German nationalism is bad. So anything that promoted any other sort of nationalism, like Russian nationalism, got burned. Question number four. What's your favorite novel about book burning slash censorship? Well, I have to say one of my favorites, if not my ultimate favorite, is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. And what's interesting about this book, again, it's about a monk and it's he's a sort of like detective monk. Like you see that in a lot of mystery crime novel series. But with him, he goes to a monastery that is not his own and there ends up being a murder. And so the abbot, you know, because he knows this monk is so smart and very deductive, please figure out who killed this guy. But the problem is, is that they won't let this monk, detective, into the library, which was the scene of the crime when which the victim died. And they don't allow very many people in their monastery's library because that library contains a lot of texts from antiquity, which are by nature pagan and very classical. And some of the things they talk about are in direct conflict with Christianity. And therefore they, even though they're preserving the books, they don't want everyone to just be able to go look at them all willy nilly. So I find that an interesting form of censorship that was explored because even though the monks or at least the high ranking monks understood the value of the books and wanted to keep the books they still were not willing to allow those books to be freely accessed because it might give people ideas and would like decrease their loyalty towards 
the church. And then, spoiler warning, like, to get towards the end, another form of censorship and burning is the eventual murderer, I won't say who, he takes that to an extreme where once our monk detective finds out who the murderer is and confronts him in the library, then the murderer ends up setting fire to the library and burning and losing tons of texts from antiquity because he didn't want those to disrupt the flow of, you know, Christian theology. So yeah, very sad. It's, it was so sad when the library burned down and I'm just like, uh. So yeah, that's my favorite book about both censorship and book burning. Question number five. What was the most recent book burning you heard slash read about? So the most recent one I heard of was in a few news articles in 2019. There was a Latina author. Um, she's the writer of My Life Among the Whites. And she was giving a lecture about the concepts within her book at a public university in Georgia. And a lot of the students got really mad and defensive about what she was saying about white privilege to the point that after the lecture, they subsequently decided to burn her book in one of those like rusty barbecues outside their dormitory. So yeah, if that doesn't say white fragility, I don't know what does. Question number six, have you or someone you know ever had any of your personal books stolen, confiscated, and or destroyed by bad faith actors to make a point? This has, this has not happened to me personally, but I am a member of a variety of pagan and witchy Facebook groups. And from there, there is a story that has, I've seen repeated multiple times where a practicing pagan, whether it's like an ex-spouse who really wants to hurt them just on an emotional level, or whether it's coming from a religious um, relative who thinks what they're doing is the work of Satan, what there some family members have done is they will take the grimoire, which is the pagans, a uh, pagan's like sort of journal of spells or books, or actual books that ha that are reference books for paganism and variety forms of witchcraft, and they will literally burn them to make a point, again, whether to just purely emotionally harm the victim of that book burning or to prove a religious point that this should not exist, this is evil, yada, yada, yada. And in fact, it was everyone's experiences that I heard about through the burning of these grimoires and other types of pagan books that that inspired this poem I wrote that's part of my debut collection, The Ghost in the Locket. It wasn't enough to throw the book in the fireplace. She ripped the grimoire from my hands. Years of sabbats, years of espats, years of spells, years of love. She set it aflame in a frying pan. Had this always been her plan? To make me feel lesser than? Or did blind rage turn her into a madman? She screamed as the book withered to black dust. Is this what your devil god gave you? The pages crumbled, the spine shattered. I wanted to run, but I, my feet I could not trust. She then jerked the pan up to my face. You think there's a way out? He then, no one will save you. As the smoke filled the house, my neighbors took note. I vowed to escape. All of this over a book. We think of book burnings as a sort of historical tactic used by the Nazis and or other like actual like larger organizations, but there are people who are personally doing this themselves. Question number seven. Is there any book offensive enough for you to burn? And I would say no, even if a book when it comes to like Mein Kampf or something truly horrible. To me, when someone burns a book, they're basically admitting that they've lost the argument, that they do not have the ability to go through the text and and create and argue valid counterpoints and so they know they can't do that so basically they've resorted to just burning the book to just purely try and destroy the physical presence of those ideas and try to pretend that they don't exist so yeah even if it's ideas and stuff that i really don't agree with i just don't think burning books is the solution to try and delegitimize those ideas, even if they are truly horrible, and especially not with the performative aspect of like burning books in these huge pyres. Like that's just, that's trying to make a political statement and I just do not agree with it at all. Question number eight. Do you believe there is a problem with digital book burning in our information age? 
So I was, in one of my podcast episodes of Sublimely Gothic, I went on a tangent with one of my guest speakers, Morgan Chalfant, and we were discussing the pros and cons of ebooks versus physical books. And while he's not a conspiracy theorist or any crazy guy by any means, he's just, there's this kernel, he, as he describes, this kernel of inner conspiracy theorists where he thinks about, he much prefers physical books than ebooks because of the idea that you can easily just purely delete an ebook and purge the world of an ebook, but it's significantly harder to track down all the sort of physical copies of books. And that was something, you know, that I found interesting um, to think about. And then through thinking about that, I came across this term, again, digital book burnings. And I'm thinking, okay, is there legitimate forms of, you know, ebook censorship that we should be thinking about? But unfortunately, in reality, when I searched who exactly is using this term digital book burning, a lot of it is coming from super conservatives who are bitter that their misinformation, whether it's about the pandemic or white supremacy or other things, they are, they're bitter that they're not getting the same sort of platform or the same um, freedom to showcase those ideals. Um, you know, by whether it's Facebook or YouTube, basically they consider a deleting a YouTube channel the same as a digital book burning. And again, I think maybe there is a sort of concept um, that does exist, especially among like moderate conservatives. But I feel like the people who are, you know, whining the most about it and using this term the most is the same people who I would disagree that, you know, that the well-being of society and the well-being of other people trumps their individual right. Because it kind of go, goes in the same vein of thought. Like in Europe, there are like multiple countries in the European Union where there are legal consequences if you deny the Holocaust. And I think that's a good thing because I don't, as much as I want freedom of speech at the same time, I don't want people with... Um, ideas that have already been scientifically or otherwise discredited to be flouted and, you know, try to be given the same prestige as historical fact or scientific fact is. And I'm just like, no, you can have your opinion, but you don't get to claim that it deserves the same type of platform as reality. So yeah, that's an interesting concept. I thought it would be like a really interesting thing to like talk about, but, but when I saw exactly who was using that term, I was just like, eh, no, I kind of agree with Google and Instagram for kind of blocking your stuff. Question number nine. What book did you think would cause a lot of controversy, but didn't? And I would have to say what I'm really surprised at by the lack of controversy is Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. And I'm not saying that there isn't controversy. Certainly, especially among booktubers, you know, there are a lot of rant reviews about, you know, in the same vein as Twilight. That it, uh, that it showcases problematic elements within abusive relationships and glorifying abusive tendencies as manly protection of women and, you know, things like that. So I am surprised that it didn't get as much controversy as Twilight. Not that it didn't get it at all. Certainly it has. But the fact that, you know, this didn't creep into, like, these debates about Court of Thorns and Roses didn't seep into mainstream like media in the same way Twilight did. And then by extension, not just the sort of abusive relationship stuff, but also the idea of sort of the changing of how we categorize YA. Because I read this, and, and personally my opinion, I don't think it's YA, um, at least by the old school standards. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, I, am te I tend to be more conservative when it comes to relationships than I promote monogamy and everything. But I think there is something to be said about us moving towards a more sex positive society because by making sex more acceptable, more socially acceptable and more socially talked about, then it won't have the same forbidden fruit complex, if you will. And I think just like whether it's again, sex or alcohol or drugs, I feel like in the American um, puritanical view, if we took a lot of the forbidden fruit sentiments of these things, then society would be a lot better overall because people would not be dying to do them as a sort of act of countercultural rebellion. For both the sort of the feminist reasons and the sort of rating reasons, I'm surprised that conversations about Court of Thorns and Roses didn't make it into a mainstream media the way Twilight did. Or maybe it did and I've just been living under a rock. Let me know. And finally, the last question. If the authorities were coming for your books, what would you do to hide or preserve them? 
well, of course, in my future dream house, what I hope I would hope I would have a secret library, you know, under in the basement or whatever, so they couldn't get my books. But if we're talking about purely where I'm living now, and we suddenly became a police state, and they were after my books, I think, depending on how much advance and warning I was given, I would probably want to take, you know, my ultimate favorites of my collection, go out into nature where I do my hiking, you know, and hike like seven miles, go off the track, and then bury my books. That's basically what I would do to avoid either having them confiscated or burned. So yeah, that was my original burned and banned book tag. Thank you so much for listening. And again, all are welcome to join in on this tag. I'm like, I'm really curious about this notion of book burning, both historically and in modern times. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments and do this tag for yourself. Catch you guys later. Bye.